Hello and welcome back to Culinary Haven. Today, by request of Mr. Haven, we are making Irish beef stew with Guinness, topped with cheese dumplings. Irish cheddar cheese, naturally. Let's begin. To prepare the Irish stew, you'll need 2 pounds or 900 grams of beef chuck, cubed, half a pound or 250 grams of bacon chopped, about half a pound of mushrooms sliced, two onions, three potatoes, two carrots, four stalks of celery, one turnip, a liter, four cups of beef stock, and a can of Guinness. And the seasoning, salt, pepper, a tablespoon, two tablespoons of Worcester sauce, and some bacon. And for the dumplings, we'll need two cups of self-raising flour, one cup of grated cheddar cheese, one cup of buttermilk, and one teaspoon of dried mustard. And also a small bunch of chives, finely chopped. We'll also need some parsley for the cooking and for the garnish. Before we start cooking, uh, I just want to say that we would normally make it in a Dutch oven. But for the purposes of filming, we're doing it in a shallow cast iron casserole pan so that you can have a better view. Hope it works. And we'll start with preheating the pan until it's hot and then we'll cook the bacon so that it renders all the fat and that will be the fat we'll be cooking in. I'm just going to put literally a tablespoon of rapeseed oil just to lubricate the pan and now I'm going to add the bacon. And the pan is hot now, so we can turn it down and cook the bacon until all the fat it has is rendered. We'll see. If it's not enough, when it's all done, we can always add a little bit of butter. Whilst the bacon is rendering, we're going to prepare the beef, which we're going to season. Salt and pepper, freshly ground black pepper, and sprinkle with sunflower. here Just very simple seasoning of course and a little bit of flour which will help to make the sauce a little bit thicker okay. let's turn the pieces over and same on the other side ready there you go the bacon is now nicely brown and gave so much fat. If you feel like um, you need a little bit more, you can add a little bit more oil or butter, but I don't like, uh, I just try to make it, cook it on as little fat as possible, as, as long as it's enough, I'm happy. Another minute and we will take the bacon out and then we'll brown the beef. Bacon is ready to go. Just squeeze a little bit the excess fat that is still on it. And now we'll brown the beef on both sides and adding the flour to the raw meat before you fry it, cook the flour and that way you will not have a taste of raw flour if you're adding it in the end into the sauce to thicken it. It's better to have the flour before you brown the meat. And now on the other side, as the beef is browning, there we're going to chop the onions and the celery. Chop it finely. That's it. And now we'll take the beef off the pan. So the beef has nicely browned on all sides. We're taking it off for a few minutes. Now we'll fry the onions. Thank you. 
I don't want to add any more salt because we salted the meat, the bacon is salty and there's plenty of salt in the beef stock so we'll just actually cover it with the lid to soften the onions rather than putting more salt in them and the juices from the onion will deglaze the pan. The onions will be cooking in there for a couple of minutes and we'll chop the celery and the carrots into manageable pieces. Chop the carrot, uh, but not as tiny as the onions and the celery, just chunky pieces in half and then across. Now we're going to add this to the onions. I have just added two tablespoons, 30 grams of butter to the pan because it turns out the bacon wasn't as fatty as I had hoped. It's fine. As you can see, the onion is um, deglazing the pan with, the, with its juices. The stock and Guinness will do the rest. And now I'm going to add the celery and carrot. Turn the heat up and cook on high for a couple of minutes, stirring occasionally. It looks like an awful lot of vegetables here, but it will all cook down significantly. A couple of minutes. That's it, looking good. The pan is getting cold enough. And now we're going to add the liquids. A can of Guinness. This in. And now I'm adding two cups, half a liter of the stock that we made and we'll add the rest when we're adding the potatoes at the turnip. Two tablespoons of Worcester sauce, a couple of bay leaves. That's it. And now we are returning the meats back to the pan. Give it a stir, bring it to a boil and then turn the heat down cover it leaving the lid slightly opened and cook for one hour. The meats have been cooking for almost an hour now and we're going to chop uh, the vegetables, prepare them to go in the pot. Chunky pieces, cut it in half, then in half again. Like this. And the turnip very hard. Be careful. And slice the mushrooms. Looks like a lot but uh, mushrooms really shrink as they cook. And now we're going to add them to the pot. There we are. The meat is very nicely cooked. Chuck is the best cut for stewing. It's very soft and tender and has very nice texture. Like I said in the beginning, I would normally do it in a Dutch oven. It's, uh, this pot is a little bit uh, too small, but I'll try. I'll try and put everything in. If it doesn't work, we'll just transfer everything into the Dutch oven. <laughs> it's it's a challenge but I think we'll manage I'm not going to add the mushrooms yet because they cook much faster than the potatoes and the turnip I'm just going to add a little bit more of the beef stock and turn the heat up bring it to a boil and then turn it down again and simmer for 20 minutes and in 20 minutes we're going to add the sliced mushrooms and some chopped parsley. It's been 20 minutes and the 
potatoes and the turnip should be near ready by now. Yeah, getting there. The pot is full, but we'll just keep going. I'm going to add the small bunch of freshly chopped parsley and the mushrooms. Add a little bit more stock, cover it and cook for 10 minutes. Now let's have a look. Looking good despite the crowd. And now we'll give it the last stir before we prepare the dough for the dumplings and put them in. The pot is overcrowded, but we're still gonna make it. There you go. Cover it and just let it simmer whilst we're preparing the dough. And now we'll prepare the dough for the cheese dumplings. I'm going to use a food processor. You can also do it by hand, just rubbing in but, uh, butter and shortening with the flour. Two cups of self-raising flour, 30 grams of butter cubed and 30 grams of shortening, I'm using Trex. One teaspoon of bread mustard. And we'll process until the mixture resembles breadcrumbs. Like this, just a fine breadcrumb texture. And now I'm going to transfer this mixture into a bowl. The reason is that I don't want to overwork the dough, so it's better to do the rest by hand. Add one cup of grated cheddar cheese, mix it. A handful of finely chopped chives. And 250 ml of buttermilk. The dough will be wet and sticky, but that's okay, that's how it should be. And mix just until everything is combined, literally a few seconds. That's it, it's ready. And now we're going to shape the little dumplings. Take a little bit at a time, about the um, size of a walnut. Actually, uh, it, it makes it much easier if you wet your hands before you spin. Um, a piece of dough to roll the dumpling with hands and they don't stick. And now we're going to put the dumplings on top. You can make them larger if you wish. I like them this size. And now they're going into the preheated to 180 degrees Celsius oven for 20 minutes. Uncovered. And there it is, the Irish beef stew with Guinness topped with cheddar cheese dumplings. It's ready to be served and today I'm serving it with some freshly baked Irish soda bread. If you'd like to know how to make that, just let me know, I'll show you how. Thank you for watching this episode of Culinary Haven. Please like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, bye!